visited. The epistle is taken from Hebrews chapter 5, beginning at the first verse. For every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. He can have compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray, since he himself is also subject to weaknesses. Because of these, he is required as for the people, so also for himself, to offer sacrifices for sins. And no man takes this honor to himself, but he who is called by God, just as Aaron was. So also, Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he also says in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications, with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was hurt because of his godly fear. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him, called by God, as high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of God.
the Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 17, beginning at the first verse. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son also may, be, may glorify you, as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me. And they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me and they have received them and have known surely that I came forth from you and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. Verse 18. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world, and for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for those alone, for these alone, but also for those who would believe in me through their word, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you that they also may be one in us, and that the world may believe that you sent me. This is the gospel of Christ. is coming to you live from God my life Advent Cable Network Nigeria is taking place in Archbishop Viney Memorial Cathedral in Kenya Lagos of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so peace. 
Where there is injury, let there be pardon. Where there is discord, let there be union. Where there is doubt, let there be faith. Where, Father, there is darkness, let there be light. Where there is despair, let there be hope. Where there is darkness, let there be light and joy. For the sake of your only Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Please be seated. We greet and rejoice with the primates and metropolitan of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, our dear Father in God, the Most Reverend Dr. Henry Ndukuba, and his dear wife, Mrs. Angela Ndukuba. And I'd like to personally thank the primate for giving me and my mind burden the honor of leading the retreat of these our fathers and preaching at this historic service. I am not unaware of the weight of that responsibility, especially at this time in the life of the church and in the life of the nation. Hence, my utter dependence upon the Lord for utterance. And I trust him who is the Lord of the church to send us the word in season for the edification of his church. We salute our host, Bishop of Lagos West and his dear wife and all his people in this diocese. I acknowledge my brother bishops, archbishops, and other clergy here present. We acknowledge our church veterans, that is the restored fathers. Here are the men whom God has been using to advance the gospel of his son Jesus Christ throughout the nook and crannies of this nation and beyond. So many things are wrong in our nation. Even if we say it is temporary, the truth is that people are in severe pain. And when people are pushed to tears, it is clergymen and their wives who offer their shoulders for people to lean upon and cry upon. May your strength never fail you. May your oil never run dry. And may your lamps never go out in Jesus' name. I also like to welcome into our midst all of you, family, friends, loved ones of our new fathers in God. Surely today is a day of joy for all of us. May your joy be eternal in Jesus' name. Let me also welcome all the dignitaries who have come to honor us with their presence at this service. Particularly, all the legal officers of the Church of Nigeria, legal officers of Lagos West, and the Chancellor of Lagos. Today is a day of joy for us in the Church of Nigeria. We are presenting a new crop of leaders at various strata of the leadership of the church. We thank God. We are having the presentation of the new dean of the Church of Nigeria and also two archbishops. And we must not forget to thank God for the ministry and tenor of Archbishop Buba Lamido and his wife, our outgoing dean of the Church of Nigeria. Beloved in Christ, we rejoice with the four of you, fathers who are being consecrated today. We welcome you with joy to this new level in the service of Jesus. There must be some special nostalgia for Bishop Ifedola. At the age of 25, in 1988, you were ordained a deacon in this church. 
And now you are back 35 years later to be consecrated a bishop. It is, it is indeed something that should evoke deep feelings. As you return to this better, let us be quick to point you to the vow of Jacob. Genesis 28 verse 16. If God will be with me and keep me in this way that I am going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. At all times, we all must remember that we are who we are only by the grace of God. It is God who has done it, not even the system, not anybody. And so we must return all the glory and honor to him. We must strive to please him at all times. Brethren, our Lord Jesus Christ told us of the many things that shall happen in the last days. In Matthew 24, 4 to 14, he listed many things that included deception, falsehood, heresy, wars, and rumors of wars, famine, pestilence, earthquakes, sorrow, and most especially persecution, which will make many to wax cold in their love for Christ. We are already seeing all these things around us. The one that touches us most directly is the fact that there is rising intolerance of the truth of God's word. The church is being pressurized to become more and more permissive, secular, and compromising. Those who dare to remind the world of the true gospel, they are hated. Those who try to live out the Christian life or to actively defend it, they receive persecution in response. In many nations of the world, the persecution of those who champion Christian ideology is no longer informal. It is now official. They will tell you that they want to make their society more inclusive. Whereas, what they are doing is that they are actively excluding Jesus from their nation, from their places. So it is becoming more and more difficult to stand up for Jesus. To borrow the words of the hymn of Jude George Dufield, truth is hated. And men are gladly embracing lies. End of quotation. It is to a world in this kind of state or context that Jesus prophesied in Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Then shall the end come. People of God, all that we are doing today is taking steps to ensure that the words of our Lord in Matthew 24, 14 may be fulfilled. We are presenting archbishops, consecrating bishops, so that the gospel of the kingdom can be preached in all the world. We are doing so because any Christian institution that desires to be relevant to God can only have one priority. And that priority is missions, evangelism, soul winning. Yes, there are many things that a church can do. And different churches can have different emphases. But any church that seeks to please the Lord and enjoy the best of his blessing must prioritize soul winning. 
We have heard several times that the church in Nigeria is significant in the end time prophecy. Holy men of God have prophesied under divine inspiration that the church in Nigeria will be a mighty instrument in the hands of God at these end times. If that is to come true, the church must major on God's priority. And what is God's priority? The salvation of souls. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us what? Not willing that any should perish, even you. God's interest is that sinners should not perish, but that they should be saved. So our eyes must be on sinners out there who need the Savior desperately. Because Jesus died for them too. And God wants them in the fold very quickly. That is why he keeps recruiting people into his work. That is why he has called all those we are presenting today for consecration. The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So, my new brothers who are about to be consecrated, that is why you are here. There are souls to be won. There is work to be done. Since the announcement of your names, by the primate of our church. Surely you must have been receiving all kinds of congratulatory messages. Visit upon visit and visit. Even as this service is going on, you are receiving more congratulatory messages. Even as this service is going on, arrangements are on for ceremonies after the service. Even as this service is going on, people are arriving to celebrate with you. Please don't be deceived by all that. Please don't be distracted by all that. I am not saying it is wrong to rejoice, but please look beyond the congratulatory messages and the merriment. There is work to be done, a lot of work. This, my fathers, is a divine recruitment. And for true children of God who look forward to, well done, that good and faithful servant at the end of their lives, if they make you a bishop, you should take it as a challenge, not an achievement. From today, erase that word achievement from your files challenge because through the promptings of the Holy Spirit the church believes through our leaders you can go anywhere to preach the gospel to counsel, to train and retrain you should take it as a call to service, not a call to come and chop it is a call to serve your Lord and your maker you sh it is a call to service not enjoyment and pomposity of office. Surely you have had a lot during your training at Abuja and during the, trip, the retreat here in Lagos. But let us emphasize that the Nigerian church is now a missionary sending church. And those who lead that kind of church cannot be practicing monarchical episcopacy. Our episcopate these days has to be pastoral, has to be evangelical, has to be apostolic. 
if we will not offend the Lord, even though they call us Lord Bishop, eh, be careful. We, you, myself, and every other of my brothers, we cannot be acting like lords and loving things over people. We cannot be bishops or archbishops that sit in the bishop's court and archbishop's palace and command people to begin to bring tributes. We have to get up and be in the forefront inspiring the church to go where the sinners are, to go to the rural setting, to do outreaches, to do revivals, to do training and retraining for our people and our clergy, to do prayers and even vigils, and at vigil, the bishop should be in front. And really, if you look around our nation today, you will readily see the reasons why we must renew our zeal for the true work of God. Not our zeal for actual soul winning is the thing, not a mere proselytizing. And despite all the noise of worship in the land, who is not embarrassed by the level of corruption? the level of crime and the level of bad culture in Nigeria. It is often said that a society gets the type of leadership that it desires. If we use that ruler to measure our lives, it means that we still have a lot of work to do to truly evangelize our Jerusalem, which is Nigeria. Because even the leader that was described as the epitome of integrity, the champion of anti-corruption, when he became president for eight years, corruption practically gave him knockout. In fact, technical knockout. In fact, the kind of stealing that took place within those eight years can only be described as very, very humongous. That word is in the dictionary. I'm not about In other words, very, very unimaginable, the kind of stealing and corruption. Well, by the grace of God, he kept us safe throughout the period of election. And here we are. The nation, the nation still continuing. We have been re reassured by our leaders of renewed hope. But it is human beings that run government. So to clear our doubts and to strengthen our belief about the hope that is offered we look forward to the list of those who will run this new government. When we saw the list of leaders on the legislative side, we put our two hands on our heads and screamed, yay, yeah. Then we said, well, it is the executive that will execute, never mind. Let's wait for the list of ministers and advisors. And then the list of ministers came and we simply fainted. <laughs> One analyst wrote, and I secretly wish the analysis is not true, but this is what he wrote. Nigeria has 36 states. We have nominated 48 ministers. America has 51 states and they have 15 secretaries, the equivalent of ministers. Out of our 48 ministerials nominees, some already confirmed now, 41 have pending cases with EFCC and ICPC. Out of them, 
persons who lost governorship election resurrected as ministerial nominees and maybe today already confirmed. You know, so far, we have only had less than 10 new names or 10. It has been mainly the same people we have always known from our primary school days. <laughs> and most of these known names are people with packages. Are we therefore saying that we don't have new people who can serve this nation? Don't we have young people who can bring in fresh ideas? Why go through the cost and stress of election if we are going to eventually end up with the same people all the time? Why do we have to spend so much? If this is all that we can produce in the search for a government of national competence, it simply means we have not started. The church, we have work to do. Because the way things are, it may also mean that we have not produced enough good people. Or the ones we produce have not been empowered enough to find relevance as representatives of the people. Good people must be in the clear majority among the masses for them to throw up good representatives among the elites. And that can only happen as we call more and more people out of darkness into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. We really have to do work to do. So you can see the times in which you are coming to this level are dangerous times. Are not comfortable times. The Lord will help you. Amen. Lord bishops, we also have to do the work of prayer. Whenever darkness and evil have a stronghold on any land or on any people, we have to remember the words of our Lord. This kind cannot happen except by prayer and fasting. Matthew 17, 21. Time has come for us to re-intensify prayer and fasting for this nation. In addition to prayer, we have been called to speak up against evil in our land. Don't go and be a quiet bishop. But when you will speak, speak constructively, fearlessly in the power of the Holy Ghost. There is power in the words of those who believe in God. We have been called to bring that power to bear upon this land as we go to the various corners of the nation and speak life and light into the fabric of the society. The voice of the church has always been the voice of justice and the voice of truth. Let us bring that voice to bear on this nation. Yes, it is true that if you look at the magnitude of the problem, you may feel overwhelmed. The burden is heavy. The road is rough. The path is narrow. The valley is dark. And the mountain is frightening. But my dear bishops, this work has a secret. And luckily, it is an open secret. Travel the road with Jesus. Mommy bishops, travel the road with Jesus. Let him lead the way. Cast your burden upon him. Put your hand in his hands. Trust in him as you proceed in this journey. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help. Whose hope is in the Lord his God. Psalm 146 verse 5. If you rely wholly on the Lord, you will always retain your joy of salvation. If you go on your own power, all this brightness we are seeing today on your faces, it will fade away. But listen, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be tired. That will be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Our Lord had a conversation with his disciples in Luke 22, 35. He said unto them, When I sent you without pause, script and shoes, lacked ye anything? They said nothing. Today I declare unto you under God, God will send destiny helpers to you. As you go trusting in the Lord, you will not lack any good thing. All of us who have come to rejoice with our new fathers in God. And this message also to the diocese, they shall be overseen. Please let us cooperate with them. Let us pray for them. Let us forget about what has happened in the past. Let us now concentrate on the reason why this process took place in the first instance. The expansion of the kingdom of God. Soul winning priority, mission, evangelism. That was what Paul was emphasizing to the people in Philippians chapter 3 verse 12 to 14. The enemy of the church wants us to be fixated on looking back. Those who keep looking back, my brothers and people of God, they will either slow down or stop moving forward completely. The church is called upon. Don't let us look back. As a church, we have taken needful lessons from what is at our back, from what happened yesterday. But we cannot afford to sit down forever talking about yesterday. Now it is time to reach forward, to march forward. Now it is time to press towards the good to go. Let the clergy and laity in each diocese rally around their bishop and expound the frontiers of the kingdom of Christ. Let us all awake to the task of missions and evangelism and become active parts of the sending church. People of God, when you look at scripture, the church traditions agree that the book of Revelation is the last book of the Bible. And towards the end of this last book, in verse 22 of Revelation, chapter 22, there is that phrase, surely I come quickly. Surely I come quickly. And this is a promise. We all look forward to the fulfillment of that promise. But at the same time, it is also a warning. The answer can be seen in what had been written earlier in verse 10 to 13. The Bible says, and it said unto me, seal not the sins of the prophecy of this book for the time is at hand he that is unjust let him be unjust still he which is filthy let him be filthy still and he that is righteous let him be righteous still and he that is holy let him be holy still behold i come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, says the Lord, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Whatever your title, whatever my title, whatever your position, whatever my position, one day we shall come before the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end, the first and the last. And your stewardship, my stewardship, shall be reviewed. No, it will be reviewed. Don't just think it is left on earth alone. It shall be reviewed. We shall all receive our due reward from the righteous judge who cannot be bribed or begged. And on that day, what account will you present before the Lord of Lords? What shall be my reward and your reward? The way you are living your life now, the way you are doing his work now, will he be said to you, able to say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been 
faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Will that be what you will hear? My brothers, will that be what you will hear? A great opportunity has been opened before you through the grace of God. Out of so many you have been chosen, arise and shine for your life has come. And now unto the eternal, invisible and wise God, the ascribe and all dominion and majesty be unto him both now and forevermore. That's so good. had a sermon there by the most reverend Dr. Joseph Akife Onwa. The service proceeds with the Nicene Creed. to the service of the consecration as we sing the hymn on page 19.
consecration is now about to start. The activities of the consecration is starting. As the hymn, I Need Thee Every Hour is taken, we begin to see the elected bishops be moved forward to commence the process of the consecration. Those being consecrated today are the Venerable Collins Babatunde for the Diocese of Ajayi Crowder, the Venerable Festus Nwafili for the Diocese of Ndokwa, the Venerable Ifedola Senasu, Gabriel Okupevi for the Diocese of Lagos and the Venerable Ebenezer Saiki for the Diocese of Akokuedo. That process is starting and the elected bishops have been led out of the church by those who are going to present them and they will be coming back into the church through the western door. We will have with us at that time one of our fathers in the Lord who would explain the process and the significance to our viewers. You can all see at this point that the primate of all Nigeria is seated in the chancel right in the middle in his full primatial dress and you can also see standing right behind him his chaplain holding the primatial cross. Reverend Emmanuel Ebunu, the Bishop of Lokoja. He will be taking our viewers through the process of consecration. He will be telling us the significance and the importance of each of the various steps. Welcome to this celebration of Anglicanism, the biggest celebration in our church, the admission of new leaders into the highest level of leadership of our church. Thank you very much indeed. Something that is special about this consecration is that, well, as usual, consecration services are fixed on holy days, uh, like saint days or on Sunday as this is. But you will recall that um, on 29th of June 1864, Samuel Ajayi Krada was consecrated being St. Peter's Day. But what also makes this very sobering is that these three of the new bishops being consecrated today are actually replacing bishops who answered the call to eternal rest while still in active service. So in a sense it is very sobering uh, but the work of God goes on and um, we thank God that he has raised up uh, new servants and I'm talking about the uh, diocese of um, Akokoedo uh, Ndokwa and uh, Lagos. Uh, of course, Ajayi Crowder Diocese was simply a translation. One of the first things you will see uh, is that the bishops elect will be led into the service being held by two bishops on either side and the precise symbolism 
is difficult to track down, but there are reminders that come to mind um, when we think of um, Moses, whose hand was held by Aaron and Hur as they fought the Amalekites. You will easily see that um, these who are coming in need that kind of hand lifters. Uh, secondly, in the epistle that was read from Hebrew, we see that it is said that no one takes this honor on himself. He has to be called. So these who are bishops elect are not coming in by themselves, but they are being led in by those who represent the bishops. This happens in some other ceremonies like weddings, for instance, the bride doesn't just bring herself in. The bride's father or the representative brings the bride in. So all of these are uh, great reminders of the importance of this. As for the two bishops who hold their hands to come in, um, it is expected that these bishops should become mentors to those who are being consecrated and to encourage them in their ministry to keep an eye on their progress. So. a short while ago, the symbolism uh, is difficult to track down, but surely there are reminders. You see that the hand of Moses was held by Aaron and Hur in their battle against the Amalekites, but also these bishops who are leading them in are uh, representing the house of bishops, and they are people who should take an interest in those whom they lead in to this service as they begin their Episcopal ministry and they should become mentors and prayer partners as they continue their ministry. This is the early stage of the actual consecration. The next. As the bishops elect are led in by these two bishops holding their hands. led by the primate is upstanding to welcome this bishops elect new laborers into God's harvest field. Elect is uh, the Venerable Collins Olufemi Babalola, of uh, who is going to be bishop for Ajayi Crowther Diocese, and he's been led and presented by um, 
the Right Reverend Dr. Godson Okanwa, who is the Bishop of Isimba, no? and the Right Reverend Johanna Audu, Bishop of Damatru. Um, one thing that is significant is that these are bishops from very far parts of the communion. Bishop Godson is from the east, and Bishop Johanna is from the northeast. And it shows the oneness of the church beyond regions. And the next is the Venerable Festus Uzoka Nwafili, who will be consecrated as Bishop of Ndokwa Diocese. And he is being led in by the Right Reverend Paul Udogu, Bishop of Afikpo. And the Right Reverend Abel Ajibodu, Bishop of Ileoluji. The third is the Venerable Ifedola Gabriel Okukpevi, being consecrated as the new Bishop of Lagos. He has been led in by the Right Reverend Johnson Onoha, Bishop of Aruchuko Ohofia, and the Right Reverend Titus Olayinka, the Bishop of Obomosho. The Venerable Ebenezer Saiki is being consecrated as the Bishop of Akuku Edo Diocese, and he has been led in by the Right Reverend Olukemi Oduto, Bishop of Oyo. Indeed, uh, he was the pioneer Bishop of Ajayi Crowther Diocese, who was translated, necessitating the uh, need for replacement. And of course, we have the Right Reverend Prosper Ama, Bishop of Ogbaru. So they are all standing before the primate now. The Lord be with you. Congregation be seated. Most Reverend Father in God, we present these godly and learned persons to be ordained and consecrated bishops in the Church of God. Presented before the primate, the presenting bishops will exit for a while, but their task is not ended at this point because when the bishops elect withdraw to be properly uh, dressed in their vestments, these presenting bishops have to be there to assist them 21. in uh, wearing robes they have not been used to to be sure they do it in the proper way. The Church of Nigeria is apostolic Apostolic Church, worshipping the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. She professes the faith uniquely revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic priests, preached, led by the Holy Spirit. She has borne witness to the Christian truth in her historic formularies, the 39 Articles of Religion, the Book of Common Prayer, and in the declaration you are about to make, will you affirm your loyalty to this inheritance in the grace and truth of Christ to this generation and making him known to those in your care. Let the oaths be taken and the declarations be made. Where by the bishops elect will assent to the historic formularies of the church and also take their oath of loyalty to the church and the authority put in place in the church and for what we stand for especially in these days when the gospel needs to be guarded 
and the Church of Nigeria is clearly in the forefront of that battle for the fidelity and the faith. The legal officers are on hand to lead them through these oaths. The Registrar of the Church of Nigeria, Barrister Dr. Abraham Yesa, has administered this oath for over a decade and he is not new to this anymore but it remains a very solemn part. Now to be consecrated bishop do so affirm and accordingly declare my belief in, in the, the truth, truth which, which is revealed in the Holy in the Scriptures, Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic, Catholic Creed, Creed and to which, which the historic formularies of the Church of Nigeria bear witness and in public, public prayer and administration of the sacraments. sacraments. I will I use only the forms, the forms of service which are authorized, authorized or allowed allow by the canons. I, I do also declare that I consent, consent to be bound by the regulations, by the regulations of the Church of Nigeria, of Nigeria and canons which have been made or which, which may hereafter be made, be made by the Church of, of Nigeria, Nigeria Synod or may otherwise have no effect in the, in the Church, Church of Nigeria. Nigeria. the fact that I Festus Uzoka Mafili I Ifedola Sena Su Gabriel Okupevi I Ebeniza Omeiza Saiki Do swear by Almighty God that I will pay through the Bible. Do, do swear by Almighty God that I will pay true and canonical obedience to the primates of the Church of Nigeria and the Anglican Communion and its successors in all things lawful and honest. And, and I hereby undertake to accept and immediately submit to any sentence depriving me of any or all the, the rights and emoluments appertaining to the office of bishop, which, which may at any time be passed upon me after due examination by the prime acting, acting under, under the constitution of the Church of Nigeria. I agree, I agree to, to exercise the said, said office of bishop, of bishop so long as may be required by me, by the primate and his successors, acting under the constitution. So help me go. Amen. I call in after the oath of canonical obedience and the oath of submission have been taken. I, Ifedola Senasu Gabriel, Okupevi, A, Ebeniza Omeza, Saiki, confess before God and His Church that I am not a member of any secret court. I also vow that I will, I will never, never join any secret court, court. and I owe allegiance to no other but to the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ. And, and that my loyalty to him will always be absolute, total, and all divided. If I go back on this oath and vow, I put myself under the wrath of God. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I 
Collins, Olufemi, Babalola. I, Festus, Uzoka, Mwafili. I, Ifedola, Senasu, Okupevi. I, Ebeniza, Omeza, Saiki. Declare, Declare before God, God and His church, church that I have never, never been a homosexual, bisexual, and I vow that I will not indulge in the practice of homosexuality, bisexuality, and that if after this oath I am involved, found to be, or profess to be a homosexual, bisexual, against the teachings of the Holy Scriptures, as contained in the Bible, I bring upon myself the full rod of God, God, God and subject myself willingly to canonical, canonical discipline, discipline as enshrined in the constitution of the Church of, of, the Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion. So help me go. God. Is probably unique to the Church of Nigeria in view of our stand against revisionism and it is important that those who are being consecrated into the leadership of the Church of Nigeria must be people who are willing and who undertake to defend the historic faith and this uh, was brought in at the height of the sexuality controversy in the Anglican Communion to ensure that those who come into this position also assent to the authority of the Holy Bible on these matters. Bishops to be consecrated are currently signing their oaths. They're executing the oaths they will sign in front of the legal team, after which the signed oaths are presented to the primate to also complete the signature. And these become part of the records of these bishops at the Office of the Church of Nigeria. Those being consecrated today are the Venerable Dr. Collins Olufemi Babalola. Um, until his um, election as bishop, he was serving at the St. Stephen's in Abaddon. Also being consecrated is the Venerable Festus Mwafili, who until his election was a vicar at the St. Matthew's Church in Maitama, Abuja. The Venerable Ifedola Senasu Gabriel Okukwebi is the immediate past vicar of our Saviour's Church for Baliwa Square, Lagos. And the Venerable Ebenezer Psyche, of course, is serving in the diocese of Kukuedo was the sub dean at the cathedral there. He's been consecrated bishop today as he takes over for the from the immediate past diocesan whom as we had earlier passed answered the call to return to the creator not too long ago.
that the venerable Ife Okupevi being consecrated today was also ordained as a priest in this very church. <laughs> and that was 35 years ago. centers one of them majorly the one in our Saviour's Church TBS where the mentioned Venerable Kupmevi has been vicar before his election into the Episcopacy and um, have been served very dedicatively to both the Church of Nigeria and the local diocese of Lagos we wish him well as well as other bishop elects on this day. I believe when uh, uh, Venerable, now Bishop Okupevi was uh, ordained in this cathedral 35 years ago, at a tender age of 25, he would never have foreseen this day happening today. We thank God for his life. I'm from the ACNN, wishing him a wonderful episcopacy. files as a record and witness to the declarations they have made this day in the presence of God and his church. And that is the registrar of the Church of Nigeria, Barista Abraham Yesa, the Chancellor of the Church of Nigeria is Henry Ode Ajumogobia, SCN. By claiming your election, a bishop in God's church is called to be one with the apostles to proclaim Christ's resurrection and interpret this, the gospel. A most and reverend doctor, Ali Buba Lamido. This might be his last time of performing this role of assisting the primate in a consecration service because his five-year tenure as dean of the Church of Nigeria ends with a presentation of the new dean in the to same Odin service and deacons and to join in consecrating bishops and to be in all things faithful pastor and wholesome example to the entire flock of Christ with fellow bishops you will share in the leadership of the church throughout the world. Your heritage is the faith of the patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and those of every generation 
who have looked to God in hope. Your joy will be to follow him who came not to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. Are you persuaded that God has called you to the office of a bishop? I am so, so persuaded. persuaded. Do you accept this call to be a bishop, believing it to be the will of our Lord Jesus Christ? I, I do. do. Will you, as a shepherd and leader, be of his people, faithful, faithfully fulfill this trust, and obey our Lord Jesus Christ in your ministry? By the help of God, God, God I, will. I will. Do you believe the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, as taught in the Holy Scriptures, held by the undivided church and declared in the creeds? I, I do, do believe. Will you devote yourself to prayer, to reading the, to reading the scriptures and such studies as may deepen your feet and increase your love for God? By, By the, the help, help of God, God I, I will. will. Will you teach? and proclaim the gospel of Christ and declare it and declare its meaning to the world by, by the help of God, God I will. will will you accept the discipline of the church and faithfully exercise authority within it by, by, by the, the help, help of God, God I will. will will you be faithful will, will you be faithful in ordaining and commissioning those whom you believe God has called, and will you constantly guide, support, and encourage them in their ministries? By, By the help, help of God, God I, I will. will. Will you strive to fashion your life and that of your household according to the way of Christ? By, By the, the help, help of God, God I, I will. will. Will you, for Christ's sake, be gentle? God, I will. Bishops elect is a reminder of the same things they have done when they began the journey as deacons and into priesthood. They are very weighty words, and now that they are able to make these declarations publicly, it becomes binding on them, it is humbling, and it leads them to seek the grace of God to fulfill their ministry. The church also recognizes the enormity and weight of this responsibility and that is why the prayer of litany is being taken at this time. The litany is taken with the bishops elect all lying flat. God of Father. God the Son. God the Holy Spirit. Trinity, one God. We 
pray you, Lord Christ. Govern and direct your holy church, fill it with love and truth, and grant it that unity which is your will. Enlighten your ministers with knowledge and understanding. Especially we pray for Henry, our primate, our archbishops, and all other bishops, that by their teaching and their lives, they may proclaim your word. Bless your servants, Collins, Festus, Ifedola, and Ebenezer, now to be ordained and consecrated bishops, that they may serve your church and reveal your glory in the world. Bless their homes and families, that they may be adorned with all Christian virtues. Give your people grace to hear and receive your word and to bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. that they may faithfully fulfill the duties of this ministry, build up your church, and glorify your name. That by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, they may be sustained and encouraged to persevere to the end. That divisions may cease among all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Jesus and that all may be one as you and the Father are one. That the church should be a faithful witness in her mission and that she may preach the gospel to the end of all the earth. That those who do not believe and those who have lost their faith may receive the light of the gospel. we may have forgiveness of our sins and the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives. That the world may have peace and that us Spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples. That those in authority, especially Bola, our president, may fear God 
love justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. That all who have died in the communion of the church and those whose faith is known to you alone with all the saints may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief but life eternal. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, we commend ourselves and one another to Christ our Lord. Lord, you are merciful and forgive our sins. You hear those who pray in the name of your Son. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may obtain according to your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. To the consecration itself, from this point the bishops elect will withdraw again to come in their full robes and they are led in to stand before the primate and that leads into the consecration proper. The hymns that come in at this point are hymns of self-consecration. It is their pledge of service and loyalty to the Lord of the Church, the Lord Jesus Christ, surrendering will, surrendering devotion and everything to the pleasure of the Master, the Blessed Savior. Yes. Um, one of the interesting things about the consecration of today is that three of the bishops are the second bishops for their dioceses. Um, Ajayi Crowther Diocese, the Right, incoming right Reverend Collins Baba. The night is going to be the second bishop. The right Reverend Festus Nwafili is going to be the second bishop of the Diocese of Ndokwa. The right Reverend Ebenezer Saiki is going to be the second bishop of Akuku Edo. But the number one diocese in the Church of Nigeria. Diocese of Lagos, the Right Reverend Ifedola Senasu Gabriel Okupebi is coming in as the ninth bishop of the diocese. Definitely, the bishop elect for Lagos is coming into very big shoes because. He is stepping into the episcopacy that has been held by giants in the leadership of the church. It has been the seat of the former private of the Church of Nigeria. Um, the Most Reverend Joseph Adetiloye of Blessed Memory and 
uh, even his immediate predecessor, who had been called to glory, who also succeeded Archbishop Ademowo, who served as Archbishop and indeed in, at a point Dean of the Church of Nigeria. Uh, these have been uh, frontline leaders in the Church of Nigeria. So he's stepping into very big shoes, but trusting God, he will fulfill his ministry. I will trust thee. Bishops, before we had uh, Festus Shegu, then Baba Adetiloe, but we now join the bishops as they come in. Are you going for the chief liturgist. The bishop is also a ruler in ensuring order and decorum in the church of God. These are all major responsibilities associated with the office of the bishop.
The Lord be with you. This is a very solemn moment as we invite the Lord, the Holy Spirit, to come and do what He only will do. Let us pray. Bernus Maurus who was a German monk and archbishop. It was later translated into English by Bishop John Cousin in 1625. At that time it was specially adapted for the coronation of King Charles I. And with the recent coronation of Charles III, it was also taken. It's a very powerful prayer that comes at priestly ordinations and at the consecration of bishops. It is taken by the primate himself in this service as it is taken by bishops in their diocese. Thy diocese. blessed unction from above and glorify you almighty father because you have formed throughout the world a holy people for your own possession a royal priesthood a universal church we praise and glorify you because you have given us your only son Jesus Christ to be the apostle and high priest of our faith and shepherd of our souls. We praise and glorify you that by his death he has overcome death and that having ascended into heaven he has given his gifts abundantly making some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip your people 
for the work of the ministry and to build up his body. And now we give thanks that you have called these your servants, Collins, Festus, Ephedola, and Ebenezer, whom we ordain in your name to share the ministry entrusted to your church. Almighty Father, fill them with the grace and power which you gave to your apostles that they may lead those committed to their church in proclaiming the gospel of salvation through them increase your church Amen. renew its ministry Amen. and unite its members in a holy fellowship of truth and love and enable them as true shepherds to feed and govern your flock. Make them wise teachers and steadfast as guardians of its faith and sacraments. Guide and direct them in presiding at the worship of your people. Give them humility that they may use their authority to heal and not to hurt, Amen. to build up and not to destroy. Amen. Defend them from all evil that has rulers over your household and ambassadors for Christ. They may stand before you blameless. And finally, with all your servants, enter your eternal joy. Accept our prayers, most merciful Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit belong glory and honor, worship and praise, now and forever. Amen. joined by all consecrated bishops of the Church of Nigeria. The importance of all the bishops joining is to emphasize the apostolic succession, which teaches that bishops represent a direct uninterrupted line of continuity from the apostles of Jesus and as these bishops are consecrated they take their place in the line of succession pray for this servant of God. Receive the Holy Spirit for the office and work of a bishop in the church of God now committed to you by the imposition of our hands in the name of God the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oil. The oil. Children. For each of them in turns, not for all of them at once. Anointing is symbolic of the of the Holy Spirit upon the
these new bishops right from the Old Testament. May you be consecrated and hallowed for the work anointed. of the pontifical order by this anointing with the holy chrism of sanctification in the name of God the Father Amen. and of the Son Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Receive this Bible. Here are the words of eternal life. Think upon the things contained therein. Be diligent in them. Take them for your guide and declare them to the world. For by so doing, you shall serve both, you shall save both yourself and them that hear. As their authority for ministry from God. The next thing is the pastoral staff, which was originally Take this the staff. Be a shepherd and not a wolf to the flock of Christ. Feed them and do not devour them. Seek the lost. Uphold the weak. Restore health to the sick. Lift the downtrodden. Ensure discipline, but forget not mercy. Be so merciful and be not too remiss. May the spirit of the chief shepherd guide you. Amen. Amen. This reminds the new bishop that he is a shepherd in the place of Christ, the good shepherd. It also brings to mind Psalm 23, where the psalmist David says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The bishop's crozier or staff is both for guidance and for discipline of the flock. Receive the Holy Spirit for the office and work of a bishop in the church of God, now committed to you by the imposition of our hands. In the name of God the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This is a moment each of these bishops should remember for life. May you be consecrated and hallowed for the work of the pontifical order by this anointing with the Holy Schism of sanctification. In the name of God the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. By the tradition, here are the words of eternal life. Think upon the things contained therein. Be diligent in them. Take them for your guide and declare them to the world. For by so doing, you shall save both yourself and them that hear. By the tradition of the Anglican Church, the order of consecration, even though they have been consecrated on the same day. Shepherd, and not a wolf. The one to who is consecrated the flock of Christ, before the order. Feed them 
and do not devour them. Seek the lost, uphold the weak, restore health to the sick, lift the downtrodden, ensure discipline, but forget not mercy. Be so merciful and be not too remiss. May the spirit of the chief shepherd guide you. Amen. Amen. Of seniority, which is otherwise called seniores priores. Receive the Holy Spirit for the office and work of a bishop in the Church of God, now committed to you by the imposition of our hands. In the name of God the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. is now ongoing in the next few minutes consecrated and hallowed for the work of the pontifical order by this anointing with the holy chrism of sanctification in the name of God the Father Amen. and of the Son Amen. and of the Holy Spirit Amen, Amen. Receive this Bible. Here are the words of eternal life. Think upon the things contained therein. Be diligent in them. Take them for your guide and declare them to the world. For by so doing, you shall save both yourself and them that hear. Take this staff, be a shepherd and not a wolf, to the flock of Christ. Feed them and do not devour them. Seek the lost, uphold the weak, restore health to the sick, lift the downtrodden, ensure discipline, but forget not mercy. Be so merciful and be not too remiss. May the spirit of the chief shepherd guide you. Amen. Amen. The ninth bishop of the Diocese of Lagos has just been consecrated. Savior's Church, TBS, is viewing this live, and it must have a very special... Receive the Holy Spirit for the office and work of the bishop in the Church of God, that. now committed to you by the imposition of our hands, in the name of God the Father Amen. and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
May you be consecrated and hallowed for the work of the pontifical order by this anointing with the holy chrism of sanctification. In the name of God the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive this Bible. Here are the words of eternal life. Think upon the things contained therein. Be diligent in them. Take them for your guide and declare them to the world. For by so doing, you shall save both yourself and them that hear. Take this staff. Be a shepherd and not a wolf to the flock of Christ. Feed them and do not devour them. Seek the lost. Uphold the weak. Restore health to the sick. Lift the downtrodden. Ensure discipline, but forget not mercy. Be so merciful and be not too remiss. May the spirit of the chief shepherd guide you. Amen. Amen. The psyche of Akoko Edo has now been consecrated. So all the four bishops elect have now been consecrated and are bishops in the Church of Nigeria. Your Grace. Congratulations, your increase in the House of Bishops. <laughs> it's a thing of joy indeed, and we pray that God will bring new life into the ministry of the bishops through the addition of these ones. Their wives will be invited to join them shortly as they greet the people of God uh, the, with a greeting of peace and then they are received into the uh, altar area. These are the new bishops greeting the people of please God now. Please let the press men or the camera people please clear, clear. Please give way. All you squat or you knew, please, so that the congregation will see their bishop. Cameraman, please kneel or you get away. The new bishops and their wives have been presented to the entire congregation and to the world. The Lord be with you. Let us all stand. And I know some of these people who are snapping are not official. Please, it's either you obey or we walk you out. Page 30. Today, we celebrate the gift of ordained ministry in God's church. Will you welcome your new bishops? And will you greet your new bishops and welcome them in Christ's name? We welcome you. We welcome you in the name of the Lord, the bishops. Yes, 
I will see the us up standing. We can see your applause. Peace of God. God bless you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. your car for the service is closed in our Savior's church so that the congregation can join while this consecration last year in AVMC yes the service continues as the choir renders Zadok the Priest. Uh, Zadok the Priest is one of the compositions of Frederick Handel. First song at the coronation of um, one of the King George and the second and has remained a favorite song at great events like uh, coronations and of course in the Anglican Communion. It's one of the anthems often rendered during consecration services.
as we sing the hymns on page 31 and 32, we take the offer tray. Gate of stewards, please take place.
I said, I've got our creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer. Quit the earth has given and human hands have made. It become for us the bread of life. Blessed are our Christian children that have this wine to offer. Fruit of the power of human hands, it become our spiritual drink. Thanks to the Lord our God. It is in the rise of duty and joy. I does have no places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Jesus Christ, Holy Son and Lord. For is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from slavery of sin, given to be born as man and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. And now we give you thanks because within the royal priesthood of your church, you are the ministers who proclaim the word of God to care for your people, to equip them for the work of the ministry, and to celebrate the sacraments of the new covenant. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever, praising you and saying.
accept our praise, Heavenly Father, to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as you fully accept and obey his command, grant by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and blood. Who in the that was betrayed took bread and will not give him thanks. He gave to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This way, body is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same after supper, he took the cup. And when I had given thanks, he gave to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his suffering of himself made once for all upon the cross and proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. As we look for his coming in glory, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect sacrifice. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit. Amen. Inspire us with your love. Amen. And unite us in the body of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, Amen. through him and with him and in him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you on earth and in heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. this bread to share in the body of Christ though we are many we are one body because we are
The prayer of humble ourselves, let us say together, we do not presume to come to this year table, merciful Lord, trusting our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. For time management, I have the permission of the primates of all Nigeria to appeal to us all to please take the Holy Communion closer to wherever you are seated. Those in the first bowl of the sanctuary will come through the highs of the church. Wherever you are seated, some people will be there to minister to you in the area of the Eucharist. Thank you very much for your cooperation. be made by the host bishop, the Reverend Dr. James Odeleji.
with you. Let us pray. As I say, but also we pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for filling us with the holy food of the body and blood of your Son and for uniting us through him in the fellowship of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for raising up among us faithful servants for the ministry of your word and sacraments. We pray that the new bishops may be to us effective examples in word, in action, in love and patience and in holiness of life. Grant that we with them may serve you now and always rejoice in your glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Be seated for the presence of the archbishops now. The next team. The Lord be with you. As we take the hymn on page 39, we go into the service of the presentation of the Archbishops of the Ecclesiastical Provinces of Lagos and Kaduna. Most Reverend Dr. Michael Olishina Fakwe, who is to be presented as the Ecclesiastical Archbishop for the province of Lagos. Reverend Timothy Yahaya is also to be presented as the Archbishop of the province of Kaduna. He is Bishop of Kaduna.
Let the congregation be seated. We read. Whereas, in accordance with the provisions of Canon 4, Article 1 of the Constitution and Canons of the Church of Nigeria 2020, there shall be a provisional large bishop who shall be the chairman of the provincial council of a province within the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, and whereas in accordance with the same Canon 4, Articles 1 and 2, at the Episcopal Synod held at the Basilica of Grace, Gudu District, FCT, Abuja, in the Diocese of Abuja on Tuesday, June 6, 2023, the Most Reverend Michael Olushina Fakwe was elected Archbishop of Lagos for a five-year term. And the Most Reverend Timothy Yaya was elected Archbishop of Kaduna for a five-year term. We now we present Henry by the prime by divine providence, Archbishop, Metropolitan, and Primate of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, hereby present to you our brother, the most Reverend Dr. Michael Olushina Fakwe as the Archbishop of the Ecclesiastical Province of Lagos, in the name of God the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Given under our hand and seal, this 27th day of August, in the year of our Lord, 2023, in the 24th year of our consecration and of our primacy, the fourth. Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion, certificate of presentation as Archbishop. This is to certify that the most reverend Michael O Fape was presented for the second time as the Archbishop of Lagos Ecclesiastical Province, Church of Nigeria, on Sunday, August the 27th, 2023, at the Archbishop Vining Memorial Church Cathedral, Obakinjovi Road. Lagos West Diocese, Lagos. May the Lord bless you and your ministry to his church. In the name of God the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Page 41. Now, therefore, we, Henry, by divine providence, Archbishop, Metropolitan, and Primate of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, 
hereby present to you our brother, the most reverend Dr. Timothy Yahaya, as the Archbishop of the Ecclesiastical Province of Kaduna, in the name of God the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Given under our hand and seal this 27th day of August in the year of our Lord 2023 in the 24th year of our consecration and of our primacy the fourth. Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion Certificate of Presentation as Archbishop. This is to certify that the Most Reverend Timothy Yahaya was presented for the first time as the Archbishop of Kaduna Ecclesiastical Province, Church of Nigeria, on Sunday, August the 27th, 2023 at Archbishop Vining Memorial Church Cathedral of Akinjobi Road, Lagos West Diocese, Lagos State. May the Lord bless you and your ministry in his church. And we present this to you in the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Come with me to page 35. Page 35. Take my life and let it be as we sing that hymn, the Dean designate will go and get ready and come. We will take stanzas one, two, five, and six. One, two, five, and six. The new dean of the Church of Nigeria is the most reverend. Blessing Ayinda. He is the Bishop of Equerry and the Archbishop of the Niger Delta. Blessing Ayinda is a trained journalist and holds a PhD in journalism, but he's also been in the ministry. Um, he's one of those who came to know the Lord through the work of the FCS in its days in secondary school. Today he serves the Lord. He's been an ordained priest, current Archbishop of the province of Niger Delta, and was elected Dean of the Church of Nigeria. The Dean of the Church of Nigeria is the number two person in the ranks of the church being the second person to the primate. Of course, that means that he's um, the number two person in the Church of Nigeria. Most Reverend Blessing Ayinda takes the solo walk through the west door, down the aisle, to be presented as the new dean of the Church of Nigeria.
let the congregation be seated at the presentation we shall all stand whereas in accordance with the provision of canon 3 article 1 of the constitution and canons of the church of nigeria 2020 there shall be a dean of the church of nigeria who shall be elected in accordance with the provisions of the canon of canons 2 and 3 of this canon and whereas in accordance with <coughs> the same canon 3 at the episcopal synod held at the basilica of grace gudu fct abuja in the Diocese of Abuja on Tuesday, June 6, 2023, the Most Reverend Blessing Chinyere Eida, the Archbishop of the Ecclesiastical Province of Niger Delta, was elected Dean of the Church of Nigeria for a single term of five years only. Shall we stand? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Now, therefore, we, Henry, by divine providence, Archbishop, Metropolitan, and Primate of the Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion, hereby present to you our brother, the most reverend Dr. Blessing Chinyere Enyinda as the Dean of the Church of Nigeria, in the name of God the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Given under our seal, under our hand and seal, this 27th day of August, in the year of our Lord, 2023, in the 24th year of our consecration and of our primacy, the fourth. Our beloved brother, Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, certificate of presentation as dean. This is to certify that the most reverend blessing Chinere Eninda was presented as Dean Church of Nigeria on Sunday, August the 27th, 2023 at, at Bishop Vining Memorial Church Cathedral of Akinjobi Road, Lagos West Diocese, Lagos. We present this to you May the Lord bless you and your ministry to his church. We present this to you in the name of God the Father, Amen. God the Son, Amen. and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Became a priest in 97. The Lord be with you. Lord, you. Lord, you. Please come forward. Let our mamas join. was elected bishop in 2007 and um, was elected an archbishop on the 23rd of April 2011 and today he is presented as the dean of the church of Nigeria. The Lord be with you. Today we celebrate the gift of leadership in God's church. Will you greet your new archbishops and dean and welcome them in Christ's name? Sense of the Anglican Church, her traditions, and how the leadership is not only recruited 
but put in place for the church. The Lord be with you. The band and choir will lead us as we praise the Lord and come forward for thanksgiving. As you come, may the Lord bless you. I've now come to an end. The next thing is Thanksgiving and the Church of God is going to be celebrating. Tomorrow, the ACNN will also be live as the ninth bishop of Lagos is enthroned in his cathedral at the Cathedral Church of Christ Marina. Join us at 10 o'clock in the morning for that live telecast. But continue to watch this service. The service is not ended. It's time for Thanksgiving. Uh, the Venerable Ulo Gwara, you have a word for our viewers. It's been a very spirit inspiring and great service of the Church of Nigeria. The ordination of the Bishop Itlex and the presentation of the Archbishop and the new Church of Nigeria. We thank you all and we bless you in the name of the living God. Amen.
approval of the primate of our church to have another bag very close to the west door. Please drop your offerings and go to the other side so that our panderium will not be cold. More choruses, please. 